For the live fire exercise, there's a scenario uh, where there is a friendly force that uh, has been trapped behind enemy lines. We're moving forward to rescue the uh, friendly forces. And as the uh, sapper unit here, we're breaching that uh, minefield. Fire the hole. And allowing lanes for the friendly forces to maneuver through, uh, link up with the friendly forces on the far side, and then together press forward and uh, engage and destroy the enemy. I think our soldiers are doing great. Uh, we just got done with uh, one of our live fire exercises. Uh, sappers get out and get to uh, blow demolitions and clear lanes and uh, uh, see the tanks as they come down and go through their lanes. It's, it's a pretty big morale booster to see uh, all of your hard work and all of your training come to fruition uh, with these uh, training events. Everything from the terrain uh, to the rain uh, that's coming in right now to uh, maintenance on our equipment, uh, it really replicates the stress of an actual combat environment. And, uh, I think it's a good opportunity for soldiers uh, to train just like this uh, in preparation for future missions. Um, the great part time uh, gives us a chance to um, figure out the, the kinks uh, in our command nodes and communication systems as well as sharing our tactics and that just improves readiness. The U.S. being uh, more than willing to um, deploy our forces to uh, Eastern Europe to participate with the, um, the multitude of NATO countries that inhabit this area uh, it shows our commitment uh, to defending, um, defending Europe in the event that uh, our forces would be called to answer um, and support our NATO allies. The best part is that the professionalism between all NATO countries uh, allows us to address issues and concerns that we may have in terms of safety and fighting capability, uh, and we're easily able to resolve those as we fight for one common mission.